Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday, November 6, 2024 meeting of the Northampton Community Preservation Committee. Tonight, our main focus is to listen to our constituents, to allow folks to comment on the eight proposals that are in front of us this evening. So, folks, uh, everybody will have a chance to give their two cents or a couple minutes worth. Uh, in just a moment, we have a few quick items to attend to. We always start off our meetings with any general public comment. This is not comments on any of the eight proposals in front of us tonight, but any just general CPC comments. Is there anybody out there that would like to comment generally on these on the on the committee? If so, if you could raise your hand or a wave or something. Not seeing anybody. Sarah, are you seeing anyone? No? Okay. Uh, we have minutes to approve. Sarah sent those out earlier today, I believe, of October the 2nd of 2024. Um, let's see. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Uh, Kevin, thank you. A second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion on those minutes? I I had one question for you, Sarah. the The meeting was focused on Stuart Saganor, the executive director of the Community Preservation Coalition, doing a presentation for us. And can you refresh my memory of what he said regarding businesses being able to opt out of the first? bit of property tax stuff and that we are not a participant in that or not participating in that option. Yeah, I, I didn't go into detail about that in the minutes, um, although I could add it if anybody has a question about it. Um, but he had raised the like the first hundred thousand commercial exemption. And and while we do that with um, with regular homeowners, we do not do that with business owners is that correct correct okay could you put that down as an agenda item at some point sure. Sure. for us to discuss not tonight but at some point okay so there is a motion to approve those october the second meetings any other discussion on that uh sarah can you take us through a quick roll roll call please roll call on the minutes let me Yes. Uh, Chris Hellman? Yes. Julia? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Martha? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, before we get to public comments, um, there's a chair's report and just a couple items on my on my list. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is just read a, read a quick poem because it sort of spoke to me today. And it goes, it's from a, a, a writer named Nikita Gill. And it goes like this, everything is on fire, but everyone I love is doing beautiful things and trying to make life worth living. And I know I don't have to believe in everything but I believe in that. And one of the things I'm so proud of with our town is the Community Preservation Committee and our ability to do beautiful things, whether it's with historic preservation, whether it's affordable housing, whether it's recreation, or whether it's land use preservation. In these times of such divisiveness, uh, we are a divided, country, I think the one thing that does bring us all in Northampton together is our love of town, our love of community, and our love of beautiful things. And our ability to do that through this committee is a great source of hope and inspiration and uh, and pride with me. And, uh, and I think with all of us on the committee and all of us in town as well. Um, the other thing is, I believe 
we have a new member of our committee. Uh, Devin Bruce has been officially now a member. Is that correct, Devin? Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Yes, council voted on it this week. Um, Yay! I probably... Hooray for <laughs> thank, Devin. Thank you all for welcoming me in. I probably still have a clerk of the court activities to do, but I think it's, I think I'm in. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself, Devin? What's some of the many hats you wear in town? Um, I've worn a lot of different hats. I backed out of some of them when I uh, retired, thinking I wouldn't be regularly in town, but here I am. And uh, I'm currently deeply involved with Forbes Library as a trustee, and that's been my latest gig. Uh, enjoy it thoroughly. Love the place. And... Um, and that's it. Thanks. And this will be Devin's second time around on the CPC. You were on and then you got off to do pursue other stuff, but could not stay away. So, well, I'll tell you, I've, I've done a, a lot of committees and, and boards around town and CPC is the most fun one. Believe me. Otherwise yeah. you get fussed at here. You get to make people happy. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, that's what that's that's what we are doing. Uh, so tonight we have the public comment um, session for the CPC applications. We have eight proposals that have come to us this fall. The Affordable Housing Fund through Planning and Sustainability, the Historic Outbuildings Documentation Project through the Historic Commission and also the Office of Planning and Sustainability, the Shepherd House Historic Structures Report brought to us by Historic Northampton, Cook Avenue Housing, which is the um, Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity project up at Cook's Pasture, folks following the 45, I'm sorry, not Cook's, on, on um, Cook Avenue, the 45 acre fire at Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area, which I believe now is put out, hopefully. The JFK Tennis and Basketball Court Rehabilitation Project brought to us by Northampton Recreation the Maine's Field Flood Resilience Plan, also Northampton Recreation, the Community Gardens Pavilion, Grow Food Northampton, and the Mortgage Subsidy Program uh, brought to us by Valley CDC. So there are eight proposals we have available to us for this fiscal year. That means beginning July 1st and going through June 30th. Um, the Community Preservation Committee has 1.944 million available to us. So it's a little over 1.9 million. A little over 1.3 million has uh, uh, requests have come in uh, with these eight projects. Um, so that's about 70% of what we have available to us is being requested for this fall round. That 1.944 million that we have available lasts through has to last through the entire fiscal year. So for the spring as well, um, if we were to spend out and fully fund all of those projects, we'd have about 30% of that left, which would be somewhere around 580 or something thousand dollars. Um, we do not have to hold back money, but that's just something that we take into consideration. So I would like folks to know who are advocating for um, for your project that you that we'll be hearing from you in in, in just a moment. Um, we have the ability to uh, vote not to fund the project. We have the ability to vote to fully fund the project, and we have the ability to partially fund the project. We send our recommendations on to city council, and they're the ones that that actually do the allocation. We make recommendations, city council does the allocation. But again, I just want to reiterate that um, with 1.944 million available and 1.377 million in requests, that only leaves about 30% of, of, of what we currently have available for the spring. So that's something that, that, uh, that we need to take into consideration. Um, we've had a chance to read all the proposals, a chance to hear from the applicants as they, as they have presented proposals. Um, we've had a chance to look at some of the letters of support that folks have sent. And if you know folks who are not able to be here tonight for whatever reason, 
We encourage those letters of support to be sent to Sarah LaValle and they can be posted up on the website for us to take a look at. So we would like to hear from you and also to, um, to get those letters of, of support. So the way it works tonight is you simply raise your hand. I think most of you are familiar with this Zoom thing. There's that little button down below that has the reactions and you can raise your hand. And that's the easiest uh, thing to do. Um, and then I will uh, try to call on you. And in no particular order by project, we'll just start with folks raising their hands and then we will, um, we will get to it. Uh, I'm having trouble seeing in my screen. Let's see. Um, Myron, your hand is up, is that correct? Okay, so you can start us off if you wanna unmute yourself. If folks can begin with saying, uh, telling us their name and what their address is, that would be helpful. My name is Myron Stockew and I live in East Woodstock, Connecticut. Um, I'd like to comment in support of historic Northampton's request uh, for funding of a historic structures reports for the Shepherd House, one of the four historic properties owned by historic Northampton on their property on Bridge Street. Um, the historic structures report is a foundational document for any serious and responsible preservation and historical interpretation project of an historic building. Currently, uh, I am engaged by Historic Northampton to conduct a historic structures report for the 1719 Nathaniel Parsons House located on Historic Northampton's campus, one of the most significant early dwellings surviving in Northampton. The proposed HSR of the 1796 Shepherd House together with that of the Parsons House will provide the staff and board of Historic Northampton with knowledge and understanding of the building's current condition as well as their past history and evolution necessary for responsible and creative preservation, conservation, restoration and repair, interpretation and continued stewardship of these important historic properties which they own and manage. I'm trained as an archeologist, social historian and architectural historian of early America. I've worked for the past 50 years with historical museums local, state, and federal preservation organizations, and private NGOs in the study, preservation, and interpretation of historic resources in the U.S. and abroad. I have later participated in the production of nearly two dozen historic structures reports of significant historic buildings from North Carolina to New England. These documents are invaluable records, which not only help building stewards properly, properly care for and preserve historic structures, but also make great contributions to our historical knowledge and understanding of changing social, cultural, and economic dynamics over time through the changing material history of individual structures. The support of the Community Preservation Committee to fund a comprehensive historic structures report of the Shepherd House is essential to sustain the efforts of Historic Northampton to carry out responsible historic preservation and interpretation of Northampton's historical legacy. I strongly encourage uh, the CPC to continue their support of historic Northampton and their noble efforts to preserve these historic resources for present and future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Myra. Uh, Shara? Hi, I'm Shara Denson. I'm a member of the Board of Historic Northampton. And as a member, I would like to express my strong support for the funding request to complete a historic structures report for the Shepherd House. This is a significant undertaking for Historic Northampton, and as it will provide invaluable insights into the preservation and stewardship of this historic property. We hope you will consider our request favorably, recognizing the lasting impact it will have on our community's heritage. <clears throat> Thank you, Shara. Um, I'm seeing John Todd. Uh, I'm not actually John Todd. That's my husband. My name is Dorothy Nemitz. That's, I don't know, do you want me to spell it? Sure. Okay, it's N-E-M-E. -E T Z 
and um, I'm the president of the board of Valley CDC, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the Northampton Mortgage Subsidy Program. Uh, that we, that program will offer uh, four fifty thousand dollar loans to assist low and moderate income uh, first time home buyers who earn one hundred percent or less of the area median household income. With uh, we'll, we'll provide them with down payment and closing costs. So I'm speaking in support of this. Um, because we all know there's a terrible housing crisis. It's really hard for people to afford homes in our area. And this gives people a little bit of a, a step up um, to help them to be able to afford a home. Uh, Valley, uh, we've, we've have administered this, our, our capable, not me personally, but our very capable staff, Sarah Sargent is here, um, has been administering this program for two and a half years. And um, we work with... Um, We'll work with usually about 25 income eligible first time home buyers, and they're also supported by other programs that Valley runs. Um, so we have the first time home buyer <laughs> initiative, um, which has a lot of programs for home buyer workshops and also um, individualized uh, financial uh, um, uh, individuals, financial and home buying um, counseling. So I just want to know this has been a, a great program and a, a really important one to help people um, live here who otherwise couldn't afford to. So um, I urge you to fully fund it. Thank you. Thank you. Stan. Uh, I'm trying to get my video on here. If it's but I am I am not being successful, so I'm just going to speak. Uh, Stan Moulton, uh, 34 Perkins Avenue, uh, Ward One, City Councilor. Um, I am uh, here supporting the Habitat uh, uh, for Humanity for Affordable Housing uh, Projects uh, project on uh, Cook Avenue, uh, and I am. Uh, going to explain why I think uh, this uh, is a good, uh, the $200,000 request is a good investment for the city. Uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, in uh, the Pioneer Valley has a 35-year history of building quality homes on budget using a volunteer-led process that creates affordable housing for first-time home buyers. Habitat uh, has completed 29 homes in Northampton with an another under construction. Uh, this project will result in family housing, three three-bedroom three, bed, three bedroom homes, and a single-story two-bedroom home designed for people with mobility challenges. The first buyers of these homes will have incomes of less than 60% of the area media income, and deed restrictions will require future sales to buyers who earn less than 80% of the area median income. Uh, the homes will be built to an all-electric, solar-ready standard in compliance with the Energy Stretch Code and contributing to the city and state's goals of decarbonization. The homes are within walking distance of a shopping center and public transportation. The Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area is adjacent to the building site, giving families who will live there immediate access to outdoor recreation. So for all these reasons, uh, I urge uh, the committee to give a favorable recommendation to the full uh, $200,000 funding of this project, and I look forward to supporting it when it comes to City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Uh, Ann. Uh, still waiting for you to unmute. No, one more click. One more. There, there we, we go. go. Hey, I'm David Thompson. This is Ann McEwen, 26 Washington Avenue, 25-year uh, residents of Northampton. Um, we are similarly um, speaking in support of the Habitat for Humanity um, building project on Cook Avenue. And just not much to add to that, but just as a resident in Northampton, recognizing how expensive our houses are and how important it is to have housing that's affordable. Um, so I would go along with the previous speaker and saying strongly that 
supporting the Habitat for Humanity project is really important. Both of us have taken part in building project with Habitat and it's just an inspirational organization and what they do is just fabulous. And I think affordable housing in Northampton is so important. Um, and this organization does such a great job of building quality homes for good people that I would strongly su I suggest that the uh, CPC support their application. Thanks. Thank you, both of you. Good to see you guys. Uh, um, Bob. Thank you. Um, I'm Bob Fazzi, and I'm at the 246 Cardinal Way in, in Northampton. And I just want to say a few things about historic Northampton. Um, I've been involved with them off and on for a period of time. Um, and, and, and in terms of the structure of the buildings and all that, that's, that's not my area of expertise. But I can say in terms of reviewing proposals, I, I know they put together an extraordinary proposal. The, the two things that I'm more interested in talking about um, is the impact on um, historic Northampton. You know, if you look at their proposal, they've talked about the history of this building and the importance of this building really for the future of, of what's going on there. And they've really been, um, as I look over the years that uh, the two directors have been in there. There's been just a transformation. And some of you who live closer to it have seen that, that transformation, um, that this is the place that people like to go to. It's, it's a, a place where there's quietness, um, but there's a place also where there's a lot of activities um, that are in there. Um, what, what I'm most interested in comes from the per, um, perspective of other businesses in Northampton. When people go to historic Northampton, um, they go to an event that's well thought out and extraordinary. I don't know how many of you have gone to some of the plays they've had, the music they've had. Some of you may have gotten involved in moving the barn, you know, where they had hundreds of people out there moving the barn. They're probably one of the best at involving the community. You know, they sort of represent the community in some ways as they get people involved with it. This project really expands the capacity that they have in terms of getting um, involved. What I've noticed when people go to um, some of the events at, at Historic Northampton, um, either before or afterwards, they stop by at a restaurant or they go to a coffee shop or they do something within Northampton, which, which helps us. It helps all of us in terms of that. Um, and I, I, you know, I sort of get, um, I don't know if it's, it's a sense of, of both appreciation and sort of uh, excitement over realizing this group that really is about the past is doing things that really are shaping our future. I mean, they're the ones that are helping our tax base. They're the, they're the ones who really want this to be something that we can all have pride in, um, which I think we do. Um, and it's something that um, really affects all of us throughout Northampton. So I'm here just simply to say, this is an extraordinary program um, and I really encourage you to support it. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Becky. Hi, um, I'm Becky Shannon, and I live at Two Pomeroy Terrace in Northampton. And I am also the manager of the Fiddle Orchestra of Western Massachusetts, which is uh, a fiddle orchestra. We play fiddle tunes, traditional music, and we have over 65 members. And we were so lucky to get to know historic Northampton during COVID and when we were able to play outdoors there. And now that we've been in the barn for the last, um, for this past summer was our first summer there. And it was such a special atmosphere in the barn. You have history, we're playing traditional music and there's history all around us and the feeling. And it is such a wonderful, wonderful spot. And I just know, and Lori has, and Betty have always been so welcoming to the orchestra and to inviting the community and the program that we run during the summer there is a free program for any musicians that want to come. And to have a welcoming atmosphere and a community space is so important and especially one that resonates with sort of timelessness. It's as we become more divided and we get more um, 
we get away from our history, it, it makes us a, a less cohesive community. And having an anchor that helps to bring community together and to do fun things together that are not, um, that people have been doing forever is so important. And I know that all of the endeavors to renovate the spaces at historic Northampton have enabled people to bring that sort of uh, community spirit to those spaces. And I know that restoring the house will be a, another wonderful venue for people to participate in good things. And I just hope that this will be funded and the house will get renovated and we can have yet another wonderful opportunity to meet together to make a better world. And we're certainly feeling that need now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Becky. Uh, other public comments? I'm not seeing hands. Um, Daphne, is that a hand or is that? Uh, Trudy Williams, it looks like has a hand up. Yes. Oh, Trudy does. Okay. My apologies. Trudy. Yes. Hi, I'm Trudy Williams. I'm a resident of Northampton, specifically the Leeds uh, section of Northampton, and I'm speaking in, in support of historic Northampton. Um, Two things uh, that feel very important to me. Uh, one is that it's like other buildings that have been restored when the barn and Parsons, you know, things that are being worked on to give people a place for that experience of community and connection to their past by literally experiencing a physical place by walking on the floors, you know, going through the wall, going through the doorways that people have passed through. In this case, there's that incredible, you know, vine on the door and some calligraphy, some creative work. Um, so the sensory understanding of the knowledge that it gives us of all the history that we take in somewhat intellectually often is very important. But specifically about the Shepherd House, the thing I was thinking about that is that it's part of a number of buildings and land that together um, is a, a unique chance to kind of have a real um, space of where an awful lot of porous community went on historically and could in the current from all the many activities that Lori and Betty provide the community with. And like Be Becky just spoke to, and I also have been um, there both as members of like the fiddle orchestra, I've been to educational programs there, uh, one of the hats I wear is as a uh, researcher and public historian playwright. I've researched there. Um, but that these buildings, lives went on there, you know, crafts, businesses. And it's it, to have these several buildings all brought up to an, a, a place where they can be experienced and used in the current and have that, it's true in, in the current ways, some of the activities would be different, you know. <laughs> um, there are creative things, there are historic educational things, but to have a sense of how the community, the um, people who lived and worked in those buildings um, engaged with each other and braided, they were neighbors. It was like a small area of community echoing the vibrancy and the connection of the wider community. So I think it's a very unique setting that historic Northampton has to have so many types of structures in proximity. You know, I often think of um, the strength of a braid and how metaphorically entwined our lives are. And I think places like historic Northampton promotes <laughs> in a way our braiding all the way back to the history and coming forward to the current but that also lives as we live them, as people live them then, and as our legacy of understanding our past as our present and our future, I feel like having physical structures and adding the shepherd house to that would be an incredible addition. And also it allows, from what I understood, I've read the proposal, I've seen the slides, that the future plans are to allow for space for 
things that are also uh, also creative, not just, um, you know, yes, recreational, but also creative as well as scholarly. And it could expand space and scope for artist residencies, for scholars, researchers, possibly, you know, for people to write or create or do things there. And I think having that kind of space on the future possibilities, restoring it for that too would be really great. But mostly it's it's very unique. It's very unique. And so you might wonder, what, another building <laughs> restored? But you just, you have this, you have that. Yes, yes, because it presents a unique um, setting that you don't find that often. You know, sometimes there's whole neighborhoods that, you know, thanks to the work that's being done, get preserved. And But this is with a certain focus that Historic has with a certain mission and having yet another structure being able to do that. And this report is the foundation start of that. So I truly hope it gets your support. I think it's wonderful. So, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Daphne? Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to speak in support for the pavilion at Grow Foods Northampton. Um, my, I'm at, uh, excuse me, 194 Spring Street. Um, <clears throat> we've been, I've been, the whole family has been a member of the garden and has been participating in the community garden for about eight years now. Um, and it is a place where, uh, my children go to play, they go to garden, uh, and also they go for their school trips. Just about every year, the elementary school is taking a field trip, uh, once or twice a year to the community garden. Um, and this would be a wonderful opportunity to have a larger meeting space. Uh, Cause right now what the community garden has is a couple picnic tables under a temporary tarped uh, structure in the summer. So, um, you know, in the warmer months that's what you have for shade. And in the cooler months that's what you have for a little bit of protection from the weather. So I would just, uh, I would advocate for this project and say having a a structure that is a little bit raised off the ground would open up a world of possibilities, not only for the gardeners, not only for sort of processing and harvesting of crops, and not only for community togetherness. Uh, uh, at the end of the season, we usually have uh, a dinner together, a potluck, which is really wonderful. And we had something similar uh, in May to celebrate spring and celebrate kind of the opening of the garden each year. Uh, but it would also be an amazing thing to have for the children of this community, for the school kids who are going there and learning about planting, growing, where their food is coming from and learning to have that relationship with the earth that I think is really positive for everybody. Um, so I think it would be a huge help to have a little bit of a platform, to have some shelter and to have some electric lights. Uh, Today is a great example where it's warm enough to have everyone gather, but we don't have any light by about 4.30 in the afternoon. So that can be tough. Um, so again, I just wanna advocate for the pavilion at Grow Foods Northampton. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Daphne. Uh, Amy. Amy Landry, uh, I live in Conway. Um, I work for Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity, 140 Pine Street in Florence. And I just wanted to share with the group um, some words recently sent to me by a Habitat homeowner, uh, just to give you an idea of the impact having a home has had on, on this particular individual. Uh, open quote, Having built and purchased my home as a partner family with Pioneer Valley Habitat, I've experienced how much of a difference this opportunity can make in the lives of those for whom home ownership would otherwise be out of reach. To say that I'm fortunate would be an understatement. As a single parent in shared housing, I paid more in rent and utilities before this opportunity than I pay now as a homeowner. I juggled several jobs alongside the responsibilities of parenting and could barely make ends meet. The house I built with Pioneer Valley Habitat is now my home and personal sanctuary. It provides me with a sense of security, accomplishment, and well being. Affordable home ownership has also allowed me to take risks in my career and in learning new skills, knowing I will always be able to pay the mortgage. 
I now work remotely in the home I built alongside some of the most generous and integrous people I've had the good fortune to know. I'm grateful every day for the opportunity to have built and bought our home with this organization. It's been a life-changing experience. Everyone deserves a safe, affordable home, and I wish this opportunity for everyone." Close quote. And I apologize, I should have said at the beginning, <laughs> my internet's a little unstable and it seems to work better when I have my video off. Um, so I just wanted to say, as, as Stanley mentioned earlier, um, with the Cook Ave project, uh, Pioneer Valley Habitat will be creating affordable home ownership opportunities for four families with low income, for and with them, because they will be building alongside us, um, hoping to break ground next summer. And I hope the CPC will consider full funding of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Other folks who have not had a chance to speak? Anybody else? Sarah, are you seeing any hands? I am not. If anyone's having issues raising hands, feel free just to... Just shout to out. Going once, going twice. Okay, I guess that is it. Thank you all of you who spoke. And again, if you know folks who could not make it this evening, sending a letter out uh, sooner is better. Um, that would be helpful uh, for, for us. Um, we have the option tonight to begin funding recommendations. Uh, in the past, the committee has opted to uh, not do that on our public comments night because we like to try to get all of that done in one sitting uh, to go through all of the eight proposals and make recommendations. Uh, I have it down as about 20 of eight. So we could attempt to tackle that, but I think we have felt that it's useful if we're going to tackle it to try to uh, try to make it through the through all of those recommendations rather than having a partial conversation and then reconvening two weeks from now on the 20th and trying to pick up. What is the sense of committee folks? Um, the choice is to begin deliberations. And I think I would advocate end deliberations tonight or to wait for that deliberation discussion until two weeks from now, the 20th. Um, how do people feel about that? Can I can I do just a quick little roll call, uh, Martha? Um, I will go with what others want to do, the majority. Um, but I always appreciate having extra time to just go through everything before we sit down. All the materials that we have one more time before we sit down to deliberate. So I would wait. I would prefer to wait for a couple of weeks. Uh, Chris Tate. Uh, I'd be fine to do it tonight. Uh, Julia? I'd prefer to wait to the 20th and spend a little more time going back through content. Uh, Jeff? I'd prefer, <clears throat> prefer to wait um, in light of what happened yesterday and last night. Um, it's been a very long day, and I'd, I'd prefer to study the materials. <clears throat> Chris Hellman? Uh, I'm I'm ready to wait. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, I'd suggest waiting as well. Let me. Uh, truly agnostic. So, um, Chris, I think Chris Tate, I think you're outvoted here on this one. I think we will. Uh, and with Lemmy's ag ag agnotism, agnotic noticism. Um, it looks like the sense of the committee is is to wait. So those of you who weighed in uh, with your comments, um, it looks like we're going to wait and make those deliberations and hopefully get through all of that in one meeting. And that would be two Wednesdays from now. That would be Wednesday, November the 14th plus 6th, 20th, uh, which would be a Zoom meeting. And we would encourage you to join us at that time and listen in as we do 
uh, deliberations. Um, so putting things off until until two weeks. Uh, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Uh, it, does anyone have any information needs or anything that would help them to reach a decision that I could provide? I sent out the financial report and I could send that again just so you don't have to dig for it. Um, but but anything else, else that would be useful? Sarah, this is Devin. Um, it would be useful for me. I don't think I was on the first distribution. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I know, sir, we've talked about it like loosely, but if you could just recap, and maybe this is somewhere, but um, like potential for next, you know, like how much, my, I don't know if there's a way to talk, somehow in the materials capture and writing potential people for the next round and how to like weigh that. I mean, I know it's kind of impossible to weigh sometimes, but just sure. trying to think about that. I feel like every time we talk about it, I don't really get it. So sure. Devin, I apologize. I don't think I called on you whether you wanted to wait for two weeks, but um, the I'm, verdict I'm is out. Me. I was agnostic. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I think I called on everybody else. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Okay. We will see all of us back here to hopefully be begin definitely and hopefully end our funding recommendations uh, two weeks from now, Wednesday, the 20th of November. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, public folks, for commenting. And we'll see you in two weeks. Goodbye. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks everyone.